first lecture of the year. Now after you're watching this lecture, you should have had a chance in class to explore with these ideas, and then the point of this lecture is to fill in any gaps, um, give you a little bit more information, and then in class the next day we're going to play with these equations and really, really learn how to solve these problems. So um, this is our first one. So when you're doing a lecture, you want to follow along in your learning packet. You want to write everything that I write. For instance, uh, in your notes, in your learning packet here, we're going to label this lecture one, and the title of lecture one is molarity. Okay, so you're going to write that. Now, the most important part of doing a lecture is doing the summary to the lecture. And you notice here, right below the video you're watching, you do have a summary box. And if you don't know how to do the summary, you can go here and click this button and look at an example of a summary. It needs to be five sentences and this shows you exactly how to do it. Um, if you want to get these lectures throughout the year in iTunes, you can click here. Just know that if you get it in iTunes, meaning you're going to subscribe to a podcast, um, you need to keep plugging your iPhone in and updating it to get the videos or your iPod, etc. Or even directly on your computer if you have iTunes. But you need to go back and fill out the summary. This is the way that I give you that five points that you get for each video. Um, I do not recommend you watching the video all the way through, taking notes, and then doing the summary. What I recommend is you watch the video. Once a point comes up, something you understood or you didn't understand, press pause, fill out the summary. So go through the video in parts, rewinding when you need to, filling it out as you go along. That way, when the video is over, you're already done with your summary and you can be done for the night. So in this first video about molarity, a, a term you might remember from last year if you were in honors, actually, um, it's a concept. Let's say we have two flasks. And flasks that look like this, this could be a round bottom flask, or sometimes if it's not as round at the bottom, we can call it an Erlenmeyer flask. And let's say this flask has a set volume. We'll say this volume is 125 milliliters, standard volume for, 100, for a Erlenmeyer flask. And let's say we have two 125 milliliter flasks. And let's assume these things are filled up to the brim, all the way to the top. And now let's take a microscopic look inside at the solute particles. So let's say that this, they both have the same solute particle, let's say the blue circle. Let's say this one has five solute particles, and let's say this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten. Okay, I'm super ghetto drawing here. But the point I'm really getting at is both of these have the same volume, 125 milliliters. This one has more solute particles, these blue circles, packed into a given space. So this one here has a greater molarity or a larger concentration. So it's really a measure of how much solute is packed into a given solution. So let's go down here and write some definitions and equations. Now, although there's this big gap here in my sheet, do not have this big gap there in your notes. Write it directly underneath. Okay. So we want to define what molarity is first. So let's define that. And the symbol that you're going to see throughout the year in molarity is this sideways M, big capital M. Okay. I'm going to underline all definitions. And molarity is just a measure of a solution and we learned yesterday that a solution is made up of two parts, a solute and a solvent. Measure of a solution's concentration. And the equation for molarity, we're going to use this M here, is M equals moles, and MOL is the abbreviation for moles divided by liters. Now, it's not just moles per liter. Actually, we want to focus in here. This is moles of only the solute. And down here, this is liters of the total concentration, I mean of the total solution. So the total solution is made up of the solute plus the solvent. So you know like it, if there is salt and water, the salt is actually taking up some space, so we do include that volume. So it, it's incorrect to say add a certain amount of solute and then add whatever volume of water you want. 
we want to say add the solute and then add enough water to reach a certain solution because that solute is taking up space. But either way, molarity is defined as moles of the solute divided by liters of the total solution. And there's a certain way that we speak these things in chemistry. So let's say, for example, we had a 6M okay, uh, solution of H2SO4. You might remember from last year, that's sulfuric acid, one of our seven strong acids. And you'll learn about that unit too. So how would I say this? And what you say is you say a 6, and you use this word molar. So you'll hear me say this all year long. You say a 6 molar sulfuric acid solution. Okay, so that is what you speak. When you see this little M, use that word molar. Um, sulfuric acid normally is really concentrated, and we would say, in this case, we would say an 18 molar sulfuric acid solution. Okay. But it's that word molar that we say when we see that M. Now, this 18 would be akin to this situation right here, where there's more solute dissolved in a certain solvent. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at some examples of how to do these calculations. Um, these are really whittled down examples. We'll do a lot more in class, but I want you to get a few in your notes before we start. So let's say we have an 11.5 gram sodium chloride. This is the amount of solvent. I'm going to really abbreviate this so you don't have to write too much. And that's dissolved in a hundred milliliters of solution. And I want to know what's the molarity of this solution. Okay. So first off, in unit one we're dealing with molarity. So the first thing we want to write is the equation. Molarity equals moles divided by liters. Okay, So let's list, I like to separate this into two sides. So let's list out everything that we have. We need to know this, we got this, and this. So let's go through them and look through this. They're asking for molarity. So we don't know what, but the unit that's going to be on it is a capital M. Um, up here, we don't have moles, but you might remember from last year that out of these three things, which one of these is connected to moles? It's actually, oh, that didn't go. Well, it's actually this guy right here. Huh. That guy right there. You can go in between grams and moles. So although we don't have moles, we have 11.5 grams of NaCl, and we can convert that to moles. Using our periodic table here, you can take sodium, you can get its mass, and you get chlorine, you can get its mass, you can add those up, and you know that there are 23 grams of NaCl per every one mole of NaCl. And the grams are going to cancel, what you get on the bottom, what you want on the top. We end up with 0 0.5 moles of NaCl. So now we have our moles. And liters. We don't have liters, but they gave us 100 milliliters. And we know that there are a thousand milliliters in every one liter. This is going to be a real common conversion this year. So might as well go ahead and just always move the decimal place to the left three spots when going from milliliters to liters. So that's 0 0.1 liters. Okay, so let's go back. We want molarity. We don't have to rearrange this equation anymore. The moles. 0 0.5 moles of NaCl, okay. and this is in 0 0.1 liters of total solution. Remember, this is just the solute, and this is the total solution. And the molarity, the answer is 5 molar NaCl. So how would you speak this? You would say you have a 5 molar NaCl solution. Let's go through and look at another example. Remember, don't leave as much space as I'm leaving. So let's say we want to know the mass of NaCl in 200 
milliliters of a 0 0.1, and what will I say here? A 0 0.1 molar solution. So again, we're in unit one, we see this M, we write our equation first. Molarity equals moles of solute dividers divided by liters of total solution. We're gonna go through and list all the variables in the equation. So let's go through and read. Mass of NaCl. You might remember that when anytime they say mass, what they mean is grams. And grams, that's gonna come from moles. Okay, so although I don't want moles, okay, I wanna get to moles and then convert it to grams when I am done. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is get moles and then we're gonna have to convert those moles to grams. Simple mole conversion. So mass in 200 milliliters. Okay. So I told you last time you can move the decimal place to the left three times, but it's often nice at the beginning of the year to observe And the molarity is given here is 0 0.1. Okay, so we're gonna solve for moles first. We're gonna rearrange this and get know that moles equals m times l. This is actually a really useful conversion. You're gonna see this a lot this year. Okay, so molarity is 0 0.1, and we're gonna multiply that by the liters, which is 0 0.2 liters and that's going to end up being 0 0.02 moles of NaCl but that's not what we want we want grams so we're going to take those 0 0.02 moles of NaCl and we're going to convert that to grams you know that in every one mole of NaCl now in this case the molar mass is going to go on the top because we're trying to get grams. To get on the bottom what you want on the top, moles cancel. So 23 times 2 would be 46. So the answer in this case is going to be 0 0.46 grams of NaCl.